Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So as you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be recommending you a ton of books that are perfect to read during the summertime. It is officially um, over 100 degrees almost every single day here in Texas, so I'm definitely feeling the summer heat and I need books to match that vibe. So I have all kind of books that are perfect for the summer. I have horror, I have thrillers, I have romance, I have contemporaries, I have everything you can possibly imagine sitting all around and I'm super excited to recommend these to you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I'll just go ahead and start out with the book that I'm currently Currently reading which is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is in my opinion the perfect summer book. I've been reading this laying out by the pool and it is amazing. The vibes are perfect. If you are a fan of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which is one of my favorite books of all time I think you will love this book because it mentions Evelyn and it follows one of her husbands Mick Reba and his four kids in the 80s as things are happening. Obviously, I don't wanna to give too much away, but it follows them on the night of the big Riva siblings party. The whole book spans just one night and it's so good so far. I can already tell this is gonna be a five star. Next up, I have a few thrillers for you guys. So the first one I wanna talk about is Something in the Water by Katherine Stedman. This follows a newlywed couple as they are on their honeymoon in Bora Bora. When I tell you, I will reread this book, even though I know everything that happens just for the Bora Bora vibes, I am 100% not kidding you. Like this book transported me to Bora Bora as I was just sitting in my dingy pool. Like. It was that good. And the mystery and thriller aspects of this book were really, really fun as well. It's not too serious where you're gonna have to pay attention while you're outside reading by the pool, but it's definitely thrilling and it has that moral dilemma kind of thing that I really like. Next up, I'm gonna recommend I'll Never Tell or Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas. This was published under two different names. I'm not sure if it's the US versus the UK edition, I don't know, but I'll Never Tell slash Dangerous Girls is a YA thriller and it follows a group of teens who go to Aruba, I believe. Yes, and they are all staying in this Airbnb. They get back from a day of fun and they find that one of their friends is murdered in the Airbnb. So this has very much true crime vibes. It's actually based on a fairly famous true crime case, which obviously I won't tell you because I don't want to spoil it for you, but it made me really angry. It made me on the edge of my seat. I was feeling all the things while I was reading this book. It has that same like moral dilemma by the beach vibe as something in the water. So the thrills are definitely present in these, but the setting is very fun beach vacation. To switch it up a little bit, I will recommend another YA. This one's not a thriller though. It is a contemporary called Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This follows two half sisters who aren't aware that they have a half sister until their father dies in a plane crash. They end up finding out about each other. And half of this book is set in the Dominican Republic because one of the sisters lives there. Uh, the dad was basically having this double life between New York and the Dominican. So it's really summery to experience those chapters and uh, have all of the culture and the beach vibes. I was living for it, but this book definitely has more substance than your typical beachy read. I was crying by the end of this book. It is so emotional and so impactful and it's all written in verse. So I think it's a great book to read by the beach or the pool because it's an easy read. You can get through it really fast. It's not like you're gonna be sitting there reading and thinking, I really need to get to the end of this chapter because my legs are burning. <laughs> you know, I go through that all the time while I'm laying out. So 
perfect for that. Going back to thrillers, I would also recommend The Night the Lights Went Out by Karen White. This is not a super fast paced twisty thriller. It's more of a domestic style mystery, but it is extremely well written. It has like that Celeste Ng style, very descriptive, mysterious writing. And this is actually set in Georgia. So the heat is present, the bugs are present, the sweet tea is present. It is very much like a southern summer book. And we are following our main character, Mary Lee, who has two kids. She's a single mother. She's trying to get her life back on track. And anonymous blog posts are posted about her online and they're kind of like tearing her down and trying to ruin her life. So she's trying to figure out why that is happening and other mysterious things happen throughout the course of this book. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I gave it five stars and it was just so entertaining. It also has that like Southern suburban rich lady vibe. So loved this one. Now, if that last one sounded good, but you want a little bit more edgy, a little bit more fast paced and a lot more twists, the Hunting Wives by May Cobb would be perfect for you. This is another one that follows a bunch of rich suburban Southern bells and it's the summertime, it's hot, they're laying out, they're rubbing themselves down with suntan oil and they're just making their margaritas and guac and laying out on the boat. You know, those are the vibes in The Hunting Wives, but it's also a thriller. So. This new lady moves to town, this little Texas town, and gets invited to go out with the hunting wives. And they go out and shoot guns in their free time. That's like what they do. That's their little wife activity. But it gets a little bit more sinister than that and murders happen and I'm not gonna give anything away, but this book was crazy and I highly recommend it. Another perfect summertime thriller is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This takes place at a summer camp where there was a massacre years and years before. Two girls actually died there and now they're opening it back up and the kind of one friend who was left over and survived the attack is coming back to be an art teacher at the camp. So she's returning to this place where she experienced this trauma and trying to find out what exactly happened happened to her two friends so many years ago. It is super creepy. It has that signature Riley Sager style writing, which I love. I think Riley Sager is one of the best thriller authors writing today. And I highly, highly recommend this one. It is my favorite of all the Riley Sager books, especially reading it in the summertime. It's like that hot swimming in a lake cabin style vibe. I have a couple more thrillers here. One of them is one of my favorite thrillers of all time, The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. This is a bitch I'm gonna snatch your life story, but make it super rich and luxurious, like beachside home in the Hamptons making a drink and dipping in the pool first thing when you wake up in the morning. Like those are the vibes, but it's also very thrillery, very twisty. The twist in the center of this book, literally like when it goes from part one to part two, blew my mind, okay? This book will suck you in and not let you out until you're at the very last page. So don't get burnt reading this one by the pool, but let me tell you, it's good. The last thriller I wanna recommend you guys for your summer reading is The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. This is, first of all, a very pretty and very interesting textured cover, but it follows a girl who used to vacation at a seaside town. She made friends with one of the locals, and then years later, the local girl that she was friends with was murdered, so she comes back to kind of do some investigation on her own while she's attending the funeral. All the locals are suspicious of her. They think maybe she had something to do with it. So she sets out to find out what really happened and clear her name. This one is more like rainy 
summer vibes because it's at the beach, but it's like in the off season, there's like tropical storms. So maybe if there's a rainy summer night, this one would be perfect to pick up. I have one summer horror book recommendation for you guys, and that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix is quickly becoming one of my very favorite horror authors, and this one, again, has that like rich, southern suburban mom vibe and they're all gossiping and you know trying to figure out what's happening down the street because they suspect that a vampire has moved in next door so that's all they gossip about in their little book club and they're basically trying to find out is he a vampire simultaneously other true crime-esque things are happening down the road i think this book is incredibly well done it's also historical it's set in the 80s and 90s and those vibes are immaculate as well another historical fiction recommendation for this summer is daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins reed i read this one last summer and as you can see i dropped her in the pool <laughs> so be warned do not drop your book in the pool but i just could not stop reading this book once i started reading it last summer i it was like so hard to put it down because it sucks you in and you need to know the story of this band. It's basically like a music biopic in book form. The whole thing is like an interview with Daisy Jones. She's her own little star. And then the six, which is the band that she kind of joined up with for this tour. And there's a ton of drama, ton of romance, a ton of mystery and weird like friendship, family dynamics. It's just so interesting. Taylor Jenkins Reid can write like nobody else. And yeah, I love it. It's perfect for the summer or really any time. I have quite a few contemporary recommendations for you guys as well. The first ones are both by the same author. Lauren Weisberger, the author of the Devil Wears Prada series, has these two books. I think they were released in the last couple years, When Life Gives You Lululemons and Where the Grass is Green and the Girls Are Pretty. These are both extremely summery reads. They're very fluffy, perfect for the pool side. This one follows Emily, one of the characters from the Devil Wears Prada as she moves out to the suburbs and tries to adjust to the cattiness the drama, the mystery that goes on there. It's very funny. It's like very sarcastic and dry. It makes fun of itself. It's like very self-aware and I loved it. And this one had the same vibe where it's like dry and sarcastic. This one was a little bit more heartwarming because it focuses on mother-daughter relationships and sister relationships in the wake of a college admissions scandal. So, the people that are involved in the scandal have to leave New York City, go to the suburbs and try to make things work and put their family back together again in the midst of this small, very summery town where there is an ice cream shop and a chicken coop and there's lots of pool scenes. So both of these very summery, light, fluffy, love them. I would also recommend Big Summer by Jennifer Weiner. This one was a little weird for me, I'm not gonna lie, but I did enjoy my experience reading it. It was very bizarre, but I was into it. I can't lie, I was kind of into it. Um, it starts out and you think it's just a contemporary about a plus size blogger who one of her very old, old friends asks her to be the maid of honor at her wedding because she kind of has no other friends left. So she agrees and she's like, hey, you know, you kind of made fun of me like for being fat, but now I've like embraced that and I'm like an influencer now. So what about it? And then she shows up to the wedding and something happens to completely change the genre of this book. Like it does a whole 180 crazy. Like if this book goes off the rails, I don't even know what to think of it. Honestly, it's a hit or miss, but if you're looking for weird, bizarre summary vibes and a book that you really don't have to pay attention to and take that seriously while you're at the beach or pool, this is the one. Of course, y'all know I have to recommend where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, one of my favorite books of literally all time, can never be topped. If there was ever a book to have such strong summer vibes, it's this one. 
It's not beachy or suburban pool-y, but it's more like marsh, lake, outdoor. It's hot. You can hear the cicadas. You can see the little fish going in the water. You're out there fishing and it's hot. You've got sweat on your brow. Like those are the vibes that I'm getting from this book. And it is extremely, extremely descriptive. So you will definitely feel that as you're reading. We are following in this book, the girl who lives on the outskirts of this town and they call her the marsh girl because she lives in the marsh and she faces a lot of discrimination. A lot of people don't like her simply because her family is poor and lives out in the marsh. And then she gets wrapped up in this murder and she is suspected of a murder. It is crazy. It is so emotional. You have this mystery going on and there's also a romance going on. But at the heart of the story, it is really just a coming of age tale of the Marsh girl and everything she goes through. I cried like more than 10 times reading this book. So maybe don't read this in public. Maybe find like a private beach. If you rich rich and you got a private beach, this is where you could read that. A couple more contemporaries here. I have The Islanders and Two Truths and a Lie, both by Meg Mitchell Moore. The Islanders follows a bunch of people in this island and some people are locals, some people have just moved there. It's kind of like a little slice of life into all of these people and their goings on on the island, what their role is, and there's some romance. There's also a mystery around this guy who shows up to the island. We don't really know his story, so we're trying to figure out what led him there and it's very sweet, heartwarming, light, fluffy, and in my opinion, the perfect summer read. Especially if you're in the north, this takes place like on the northeastern coast. So it's very like small town, go down to the ice cream parlor and then walk along the pier, like those kind of vibes. I loved it. But I loved Two Truths and a Lie even more. This is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. I don't know what it was about this book. There's just something about it that spoke to my soul. I, I like don't even know how to describe it because I want to do it justice. Like it's a thriller kind of like a domestic thriller, but it's also a romance, but it's also a contemporary. It's kind of like the hunting wives where this new suburban mom moves to town and gets entrenched in this group of kind of toxic suburban women, but she's trying to feel it out and find her place there. And um, everything is just happening and I don't want to give anything away, but it's so, good. This book also made me cry as well. I am so sorry if you can hear the people shouting outside at my pool. You know, this is the summertime vibe, I guess. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into the last category of recommendations I have for you today, which is summer romances. So obviously y'all knew this was coming. Beach read. What could literally be a more fitting romance? If you haven't heard about this book and you're living under a rock, um, I gave it five stars. It's an amazing, amazing contemporary romance about two writers who are staying in adjacent beach houses. They both have writer's block, so they decide to write from each other's genres. And it's just adorable. Our main male love interest has my heart. We stand guest to this day read it now. Also by Emily Henry, I would recommend People We Meet on Vacation. I read this one earlier this month and now I don't have it. One of my friends is borrowing it, but it's adorable. It is kind of a friends to enemies to lovers romance. And these two best friends from college go on vacation with each other every summer. So they haven't been talking. They've been estranged because something happened between them a couple summers ago. And they are deciding this summer to reinstate the summer trip. So obviously they're gonna fall in love. And it's just another emotional and extremely well-written ride by Emily Henry. A book that I didn't really like, but I know a lot of people on booktube really love is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is an enemies to lovers romance with a ton of forced proximity and fake marriage. <laughs> there are a lot of tropes in here. It's very classic Christina Lauren, but 
something for me that I just couldn't get past was the main female love interest was extremely annoying and pessimistic and being kind of like a negative, short, curvaceous woman was her entire personality. Every other page, I swear, she was like, mm, I'm just short, I'm just spunky, well, I'm curvy, so I'm insecure, well, everything is just going bad. And it's like, I, I was very annoyed by her. But if you like that kind of a character, maybe you will connect with this book. I thought the island vibes were amazing. Oh, basically what happens is the best man and the maid of honor at this wedding have to take this honeymoon because the bride and groom get sick and cannot go. The catch is they can't stand each other. So antics ensue. There's forced proximity in a hotel room. They end up, you know, falling in love to romance. That's what happens. Another forced proximity enemies to lovers romance is Shift by Andy Hockman. I like this one a lot more than the Unhoneymooners. We are basically following two rivals at a cruise ship company and they are going head to head for a marketing position, like a promotion. So they both have to take this cruise together and then write a proposal about how to make it better. So it's workplace romance, like office romance, and enemies to lovers, forced proximity, and they go to the Galapagos Islands on their cruise and hearing about like the wildlife, the animals, the plants, all of that was amazing. I totally wish I would have saved this one for summer so I could read it by the pool because the atmosphere was amazing. So those are all of my summer book recommendations. I hope there was something for you in here. I tried to have a huge range of genres for this recommendation video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.